Hey uh, folks, so thanks for joining me tonight. I've got something that I'm sure quite a few of you have been waiting on quite a while. Uh, I've been waiting on it myself, but unfortunately the shipping gods, as, as it were, uh, decided that um, they had some other plans for me and, well, quite frankly it took quite a while for me to get this, but I have here the Funny Playing IPS LCD kit for the Game Boy Pocket. Now, this one in particular was provided provided to me generously by Retro Game Repair Shop. Uh, but, you know, like usual, these are my own thoughts. They're not paying for anything here except for literally just the kit for me to do with whatever I want. Um, but I'm thinking I'm going to take this kit. I'm going to go ahead and install it in a uh, Game Boy Pocket here. I got my Game Boy Pocket. Um, I have backlit this Game Boy Pocket before uh, with one of those uh, all-in-one kits and I did end up rolling the mod back and restoring this one to stock just so I could do this mod with it but this is a perfectly unmodified Game Boy Pocket. I even finally have a battery cover for it uh, that's in mostly the right color. It's aftermarket so it's not quite the same. You can see if you hold it at an angle there and the latch is really tight but I mean, it stays, so good enough. Uh, but anyway, let's uh, let's go and get started here. This Game Boy should work perfectly fine. And uh, I'll see if we can't change that by the end of this video here. All right. So full disclosure, I have already opened this up because I did make a guide for um, it, like, this kit, I'm sorry, I'm getting, I'm stumbling over my words here. I'm not as prepared as I thought it was. Um, this kit and the other IPS kits that use like a ribbon cable adapter have uh, little solder points on the ribbon cable itself for you to attach wires to for touch sensors or for button controls or something like that. Um, I took this out and I already mapped out those two touch, those two solder points uh, for other people in case they accidentally rip those pads up. You know, I wanted to give them some alternatives here. But open up this case, and I believe this beautiful blue case is exclusive to our GRS. I don't think Funny Playing ships them in this color, but I don't know. I, I, I really like this color. It's better, in my opinion, than the uh, black that they usually send them in. But I, I don't know what Funny Playing ships these in. Anyway, pop it open here. We've got Retro Game Repair Shop's card. Use a promo code if you want to get 10% off your order. Um, it is a little bit more pricey if you order this kit through Retro Game Repair Shop instead of ordering from Funny Playing Direct, but uh, Retro Game Repair Shop is based out of the US, so if you're also in the US and you're ordering from them, you'll get your kit the same week instead of um, maybe a month or two later because shipping decided that it wasn't going to work out for you. Anyway, my kit came with a glass lens here and mine does have the power LED hole they give you a choice now um, the day zero purchasers of this kit did not get a choice they just got the lens that did not have the power LED and that's just what you were stuck with um, we've also got the ribbon itself and in this bag with the ribbon there is a little touch sensor that you have to solder to and then there's one wire and then the other wire on the back here because we have two solder points on the pad itself, or on the ribbon. We've got the adhesive for sticking the screen down into the case of the Game Boy. And you don't have to use this, but keep in mind, if you do use this, your install is permanent. So if you use this adhesive, the screen is never coming out of your case intact. And then last but not least, we have the screen itself. Now, I'm not 100% sure, but I did some research on this screen. And I'm just going to set that case aside for now because we don't need it anymore. Uh, I'm fairly certain this is from a uh, BlackBerry Q5. I'm trying to get it so you can see this text on the back here. Um, but I'm not... It's not it's not quite working out oh there we go so you can see LCD blah 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 and yeah pause that if you want to if you want to look that up but 
we'll move on. Um, pretty sure that's what this is out of. Anyway, uh, Funny Playing and Retro Game Repair Shop do both sell replacement LCDs, or at least I, I think they do. I, I thought they had them listed. I know RGRS has the older IPS displays listed, uh, you know, for these kits here, but I don't know if they have these ones yet, but I know they're getting them at some point. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and set this stuff aside for now so we can go ahead and get the Game Boy taken apart here. Now, I have I have a uh, V1 ribbon, but my ribbon has been updated. Now, I don't know if you guys have been paying attention to what's going on in the community, uh, but in the off chance you missed it, the original batch of these ribbons had a uh, defect where on some versions of the Game Boy Pocket hardware, it would cause a horrible screeching noise just using the console. You'd get a horrible screeching noise out of the speaker. Um, it bothered some people significantly enough to complain to Funny Playing, and Funny Playing said, oh, we can fix that. And if you're one of those people who's affected by that and you want to get your kit fixed, uh, you have to send your kit off to someone. Uh, they'll update the firmware on it and ship the ribbon back to you. Or you can take a discount on another ribbon, I believe it is. Um, you'll, I'll, I'll link it in the description, but you'll have to check with Funny Playing for that one. Um, but my kit is already updated. Part of why it took so long to get it. So just six tri-point screws, and then three JIS screws on the motherboard here. And we'll pop that bad boy out. And to get the screen out, it's actually pretty easy. Um, on a stock Game Boy, and like I said, because this one's been modified, the adhesive is probably quite a bit looser than a stock Game Boy, but you just give the case twist and the adhesive should pop out. Now it might take a little bit more than that to pop it out, but like I said, mine's been, I've had this thing open before, so it should come out nice and easy. And you're done with this. You can set this aside, save it for backlaying another Game Boy, which is probably what I'll do. Um, and yeah, that's it. Uh, next, we want to go ahead and remove where are my tweezers? There they are. There's a little sticky gasket in here. I'm trying to figure out where the best place to grab it is. Because this is a clear shell, I don't want to slip and scratch anything. I swear it does come out easily. Oh, there we go. There was a spot that wasn't stuck down. Oops. And again, save that for another Game Boy or just toss it. I'm going to save it because I save everything. Okay. Like usual, now's the perfect time to clean these things. But we'll come back to that. I want to test the power consumption because I'm weird like that. Let's set it to 2.4. I'm just going to plug the bare screen in here and we're going to test with, I think Pokemon Yellow is my usual test for original Game Boys and Game Boy Pockets here. Battery minus. And battery plus. And 
and we'll just get it in game. All right, so in game at 2.4 volts, this Game Boy Pocket is pulling about 102, 103 milliamps, maybe all the way up to 104. Um, this number by itself doesn't really mean a whole lot. The reason I'm gathering this data is because I want to compare to after the mod um, how much power this thing uses. That way we can extrapolate the battery life. And speaking of battery life, it's terrible. I know it's going to be terrible. The battery life. These consoles are not known for their fantastic battery life to begin with. All right. I'll set that aside and to test this we will have to do a little bit of soldering. That's okay. go in here just like that with the contacts up and this pow you got to solder to the power switch Oop, that's not the right solder I'm going to tin this. Now the instructions show that it's soldered to the leftmost pin and that's what we'll try first but I'm thinking it'll work better on that middle pin there. this out if we can get this plugged in without incident maybe I'm having a hard time with this getting it lined up does not snap in nearly as easily as uh, other versions of the of these kits. All right. Let me zoom out a little so you can see everything. That's off. We'll switch that back on. Drop it back down to 2.4 volts. And let's try it out. Oh, duh. We got to put a game in, huh? that. I'm not 100% sure they fixed that entirely because I still hear a little bit of whining. Anyway. Oh, that's the wrong game. Why don't you guys tell me? Where's the... Oh. I'm going to have some difficulty getting this in game. I have to flip this up and be gentle. All right. So that didn't go too bad. All right. So if you can see that, we're at 2.4 volts and it's pulling. What about 280 
ish milliamp hours and this is on whatever the heck brightness this is um, about the same brightness as the uh, original screen was and I'm not gonna bother switching through any of the palettes or checking out any of that just yet we'll check that out later but if I recall correctly the brightness is adjusted by tweaking the contrast knob so all the way down, even though I spun it up, is about 215, 216 milliamps. And all the way up, jumps us up to a shockingly high 374, 72, I don't know. It bounces around a little bit. There we go. You can see adjusting that just the brightness. It's quite frankly a really cool feature. I'm 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 excited about that. Um, now my brightness is jumping around quite a bit. I think that can be resolved by cleaning out this contrast wheel, which might be something I'll have to do, but we'll come back to that. Let's get back to the actual install. All right, I'm gonna switch that off. So what were we at? Like a hundred and hundred something, and now we're at like two fifty. That's battery life is not gonna be great. That's okay. Plug that, and I'm going to pull that off there, and we'll just set this aside for now. So next step, we need to get this shell ready for the install itself, and that means we need to do some trimming here. So there is a picture guide that I'll link, uh, it's made by a gentleman on the Game Boy Discord, it goes by the handle Hozy, H-O-Z-Y. Uh, but uh, this is not the right Sharpie for this job. Let me grab a different marker so you can see what's going on. Okay. So we need to trim this entire thing. And this part down here. And these little nubbins right here. So hopefully you can see that reasonably well. I'm gonna turn the soldering iron off because you shouldn't need it again for a while. And this is the sort of trim I would like to be able to make on uh, my Dremel here, but I know not everyone has a Dremel, so we'll try it with some hand tools here. I'm just going to take all the membranes out so I don't lose anything. It's probably a good idea to pop this screen lens out too, so let's do that. I'm going to reuse it, so I'm just trying to get, not to get fingerprints all over it. And I'll stick that right there. So I've got two sets of flush cutters now. I've got my shitty pair and my nice pair. This will I'll use I'll remove the bulk of the material with this pair and then I'll clean up with this one. But I am a little bit concerned because this is a clear shell. I think we'll make it work. Um, I'm also going to use da -da -da -da. a knife. I'm just going to break the tip off though. Deal with that later. Alright. Just 
So, and again, I'll link the uh, the reference material for trimming this. I think I need a knife with a little bit more substance to it. enough we'll, we'll come back to that all right probably good to engage safety squints now most of these cuts should be hidden by the lens so I'm not too worried about making an absolute mess this I think would be good to do with the knife instead so that's, that's what I'll try. And this is the one I'm worried about. That one's going to show through. But I'll, I'll figure something out. Good lord. Okay. Now the reason I saved the yellow handle ones for later is because these are much sharper. Because I keep using the red handled ones for shit like this and they're pretty dull now. better trim you do, the better this is going to fit. Alright, so for this one, I'm going to score it with the knife. And then I think I'll be able to just break it off. Maybe not. I don't think I scored it enough. Oh, maybe I did. Just didn't bend it enough. See how many times I can bump the camera. Okay. Now I believe we need to trim a little bit of this LED cutout as well.
If your shell has one, that is. Mine does. I think that's pretty much it. It's not too bad. this will go in here like that the left lines up on this area right here and the top will go up against the uh, power and then it should look something like that and yeah we did need to trim a little bit just a little bit Okay, cool. Let's try it out. Okay. I think I want to just tape this in, but I don't know how to do that, really. Um, because I don't want to commit yet, just in case I have to make a few more adjustments, but, oh, there it is. I couldn't find this stupid thing. But I don't really know if that's something I can do. very least I can tape this down. And at this point I'm just doing a test fit to make sure everything's good and lined up as much as possible. Where's my power switch? There it is. Where's the back half of the case? Green isn't lined up perfectly. I need to do a little bit more trimming on this side so I can move it over some more. Otherwise it won't be centered. I would very much like it centered. Yeah, you can see how much bezel there is on this side versus on this side. isn't yet, I don't think, any um, spacers or anything like that, or brackets, but I'm going to try and make one, I think. Maybe. I'll have to get this one, or try and get this one centered before I can do any of that, though. 
there. And we need to trim this more. Not really sure how to do that. Let me, uh, hmm. Let me pause. I'm going to go find a bigger, sharper box cutter, and I think that'll help. I'll be right back. Okay, I didn't actually have to look far. It was in my drawer of parts, but I want this because this I can come out with more of an angle without worrying about the blade flexing because this is significantly thicker than uh, this. So... Down. Just cut into the side here. As you can see, I'm just shaving off some of the plastic. Before I hurt myself, I need to switch to a different tool. Okay. And we'll do the same thing down here. How much does that one... doesn't. Okay. I wanted to see how much that one showed, or the... The uh, guide I was looking at, I wanted to see how much that showed it was trimmed off, but it looks like it's almost the whole thing. And at this point, I think I'm just going to take the whole thing and we'll deal with the consequences later. This is going to affect the screw holes. How much I just cut off, but hopefully we'll be fine. I don't think we need to cut off that much. Okay. One more try. By far the most annoying thing of doing this is having to unsolder and resolder that wire every time. Oof, that's real crooked, but looks like we can move the LCD over enough to center it. Probably doesn't make a huge difference because I imagine this is going to be cut off somewhat by the lens anyway. But there we go.
All right, let's figure out an easier way to do this. Uh. <laughs> Hang on. Technical difficulties here. Oh, I'll just pull the batteries out. <laughs> The uh, power switch slipped off the uh, actual switch. You can do this, and then try and line it up this way. Hold it that way. Try to turn it on. We can get this nice and lined up. Okay. So it looks like, as long as I line it up with the top and the power switch here, and my two sides over here, it'll be pretty darn close. Basically as close as I can make it to centered. Okay. I am super happy with that. Let me... I don't know how to do this here. to hold that in place. Oops. Totally just tap the edge of the uh, shell with my soldering iron. That's that's pretty cool. All right. I'm going to release the ribbon. And now I've got this, and I can make some markings here. Let me grab the Sharpie I was using before, and I'm just going to draw like that, and I can't really do another one. Hopefully that'll be good enough. Whew. So how does this go? I'm not really sure what's going on at the bottom here. Or is that the top? No, that's the bottom. This doesn't seem to fit right either. Oh, never mind. That fits perfectly like that. Except for this extra stuff on the bottom. I don't know what that's about. that backwards though because so there's a line you can see on the left there and line up with the bezel I guess that goes like that maybe that lines up with my line oh but it's even worse Oh, but look at that. Both sides are like that. So it just, just cut off the edges. Alright. I'm going to pause for a moment and look this up before I do it. I'll be right back. Dumb motherfucker. This goes like that. <laughs> uh... I was so confused by this here, I was about to cut it off. 
But, uh, whoops. Okay. That is a lot easier, except that now I can't see my lines. But that's okay. You can work around that. I'm just going to peel off the edge because we can save the center for something. That is really wonderfully designed. Push that center out, and boom. Next, I'm going to install the lens before I even install the screen, because I know me, and I don't want to have to clean fingerprints off the LCD. This is This is the lens that it comes with, but you can reuse your old lens if you want. I'm not going to because mine was kind of scratched up, and well, this is glass. And you do want to peel off the inner square on this one, but it didn't come off, but that's okay. Now you need to get both layers here, not just the back layer. This is a lens, it should be see-through. If you can't see through it, you're doing it wrong. And that should be common sense, but apparently it's not. Okay. Goes in there, just like that. And again, this adhesive is permanent. All right. Peel this off, maybe. What the fuck? All right, that's not coming off, apparently. The tab is not supposed to peel up. Funny plane. I don't know what that was about. All right. Line up the top, line up the left. And they're married now, so hopefully that's good. I'm going to replace this with some Kapton tape. Or actually, I have a better idea. I'll just stick this over the back here. How's that for insulation? All right, probably unnecessary, but rather safe than sorry. Don't forget the D-pad. Don't know how that fell out without the membrane falling out. We're in the final stretch, folks. All right. Oh, I should go clean this. I forgot about that. I'm going to pause real quick and go hit this with some contact cleaner. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to get the straw nozzle 
and just make sure the straw is under here. Actuate this a few times and blast it out with some contact cleaner. That should help out with my brightness. I'll be right back. Right, so that should flash off momentarily and we should be good to go. Ultimately, it would be best to replace that potentiometer entirely, but I don't have any replacements on hand, so this is what we're gonna do. And by the way, for those using contact cleaner, if you get some on your fingers, you should wash your hands. Just because it's safe on electronics doesn't mean it's safe on your skin. This doesn't want to fit because I put that insulation down. Now it's at a funny angle, but I think it'll fix itself after some time. All right, solder that back down for what I believe should be the last time. I'm gonna tuck that in there. Where's the other one? There it is. And so this looks like literally just a small chunk of zinc or something. And this is supposed to be the touch sensor. Can you even solder to this? Yes, you can. What do you know? Seems kind of weird to me, but what do I know? I'm gonna clean up that joint because I don't like it. It's hideous. And do be careful, it does retain heat pretty darn well. All right, and this is supposed to go somewhere. I don't know, because the instructions I have show one of those regular copper sensors. And it just goes up on the top here. So, we'll see if that works. I have my doubts, but maybe I'm doing it wrong. That rattles around a lot. I do not like that at all. Is there really no... There's no adhesive layer or anything. And I soldered to this side, so... I have no idea what's up with that. I'm gonna get a little bit of uh, sticky tape. Just a small square. Okay. Stick that onto the front there. And this is that super sticky 3M 300 LSE or something. 
SLE, LSE, I don't know. One of those is a car. There we go. Now it's stuck down and now it's not going to rattle anymore. Ooh, that's dangerous. Try to avoid hurting myself with that. And yeah, sorry, sorry guys, this has turned out to be much longer than I had anticipated. It's really not that complicated of a mod, but I think I'm moving slow because I'm unfamiliar with it. I haven't seen any other videos on it or any other instructions really. Heck, even Funny Playing hasn't put out any instructions that I could find. Granted, I didn't look very hard, but there wasn't anything on the product page. All right. Uh, almost there. Almost there. Oh, no! Slightly crooked. Oh, there's no game in there. That's why it's not booting. That's okay. I'll deal with it. Brightness adjust is much smoother now. If I put it all the way down, turn that down. It's not really flickering anymore. Let me kill these lights so you can see a little bit better. No, I suppose it is still flickering a little. It's harder to tell. But if we turn it up a little, that's fine. And we can tap this uh, sensor to change the palette. And there are like 36 some odd palettes, I think. And if you press and hold this sensor, I said if you press and hold, no, there it goes. Just wasn't holding it long enough. It turns off that stupid pixel grid. And then we can cycle through the palettes again. Or still, pick something you like, negative, I'm just going to leave it on that, that looks good. But yeah, looks pretty decent to me. Let's run some actual tests on it. Now I have an Easy Flash Junior card. Um, but before I try and boot this on this Game Boy, I want to discuss a pitfall with some of these older Game Boy Pockets. Now, this one, I don't know if you can hear that. It's already making some noise. Um, part of the problem is the voltage regulator I used in this install doesn't go down the low voltage cutoff is a little bit higher than these batteries can put out on high loads. So if you try and boot this flash cart on this Game Boy with these batteries, it just makes noise at you, and that's it. Um, I don't really know how to fix that without using a significantly more expensive voltage regulator or just switching back to alkaline batteries. Um, I guess the Game Boy Pocket is one of the few consoles where a lithium-ion battery mod makes perfect sense because the capacity is already shit and these AAA batteries just can't quite handle the load. Um, but let's try it out because this 
does work on, got another yellow Game Boy here. This is that uh, all-in-one kit, and it does boot just fine in here, but this one isn't using a voltage regulator. This is just using the stock hardware. But as you can see, it just reset and crashed while it was trying to load. Ah, but it loaded that time. And yeah, it's struggling. Let's try bring this all the way down. Yeah, I don't think it's going to do it. <laughs> all right, well, I know this cart is a little bit less power efficient than something like an EverDrive X7, so let's try that instead. You can see the brightness going crazy on it. No, I don't think we're going to get anywhere with this either. Oh, just kidding. There we go. Nice. All right, so not quite easy flash compatible, but it is what it is. Let's try scrolling bars test. I'm going to set this down here. And let's zoom in and take a look here. So as usual with this test, when that S passes the left side of the screen, the S in scrolling, the uh, ROM is issuing the Game Boy a, uh, sorry, this is going to bug me if I don't do it. Oh yes, okay. The ROM is issuing the LCD a reset command. Now. I have shown this test specifically with a uh, with a stock LCD, and the stock LCD does not handle resets very gracefully. You, you'll see a line, a really hard line, appear somewhere in the uh, screen, kind of like. Let me put the easy flash on this one again. No, it's not doing it now. I bet if I reset it enough times, it'll do it. Okay, maybe not. But uh, you'll see like a line on the screen and then the screen will flash and then it'll come back on. This, I mean, it's not great, but it's, it's good enough, I think. Uh, the other thing I'm noticing is that there isn't any tearing or frame dropping except for when the screen resets. Now, it is, basically it is what it is. We're not really going to get around having some artifacts on reset. Um, the only kit that I've seen handle it perfectly was that Moon IPS kit that I did in in this uh, DMG here a little while back. Sorry, it's hard to put that above such a thick console. Um, but I'd say this is about par for the par for the course. It's not worse than any other mods, but it's not really better either. Let's try. Let's see if we can do a reset. Oh, nice. We'll try a couple more tests here. Gradients. And so here are the four colors that the Game Boy can display. We have white, light gray, dark gray, and then black. And then you can cycle through the palettes if you want to see all the different combinations there. But I'll link in the description a, um, I suppose I can turn the brightness up while it's not loading. I'll link in the description a, an image that someone has compiled. They went and took a picture of their screen for every single palette with and without the pixel grid on. And yeah, you can take a look at the, the uh, palettes yourself there. But I mean, I don't, I don't see anything I don't like. This is just a, an inverted palette. set that and these look significantly better in person than they do on camera I'm gonna leave it on this red one and then power cycle the screen well the whole Game Boy really I want to see if it retains that palette lower the brightness and uh, it looks like it does 
So that's pretty neat. That's a first for funny playing. Ooh, maybe I shouldn't have power cycled it. Might not be able to boot this again. <laughs> oh, there it goes. Okay. Two more things. Let's test Zelda. We can do that ghosting test. So what I'm looking for is uh, these posts on the top of the screen. When the screen transitions, I want to see if there's any ghosting of these posts. On the older mod kits, um, like for Game Boy Advance and the Game Boy Color one specifically from Funny Playing, there's quite a bit of ghosting, and I don't see any on this, and that's fantastic. The other thing we're checking for is this dude's chain. Uh, it should be flickering on and off and on and off, and if you're watching this video in 60 FPS, you can probably see that. But uh, actually, in person, it actually looks more like it's supposed to. So the other screen kits show this flickering on and off because that's how the game programmers designed it. The original screen has such horrible pixel response time that it just creates this transparency effect. And I don't know if that's what we're seeing here or if they programmed in a workaround or what, but either way, this is more like what it's supposed to look like. And quite frankly, it looks, looks fantastic. The other thing we're going to check and see is if there's any um, artifacting with the chain itself while the screen transfers. On some of the older kits, you'll see the chain, it'll keep flickering in place. Even as the screen is sliding across, it'll it'll keep flickering where it is while the screen is sliding until the screen completely transitions and then it'll disappear. And I don't see that. I mean, it's still flickering, but it's actually moving with the screen like it's supposed to. And so that looks fantastic to me. Let's do one more game here. And we'll boot Pokemon Silver. Should drop the brightness. Alright. And we're just gonna ride around and see if there's any uh weird glitches or tearing or whatnot, screen dropping. I like to test the Gen 2 Pokemon, or I like to use the Gen 2 Pokemon games for this test because the first Gen games are just horrible, sputtery messes. But this looks pretty darn good to me. And once it's actually in-game, I don't even notice that my... Uh, LCD is crooked within the, the, the shell. But yeah, that looks fantastic to me. I see no issues with that. Um, oops, I don't want to go in there. All right, so let's do a couple more quick tests before I call it a day here. I want to see if I can get this to boot at all. Um, these Ladas should be freshly charged, but I mean, they are still only in the nickel metal hydride batteries and the voltage is lower on them. Uh, I have another Game Boy somewhere. There it is. With alkalines in, them, in it. Now these are not fully charged. They are actually somewhat low, but they should be higher voltage than the nickel metal hydride batteries. Let's see if this, we're off to a bad start there. Bring this all the way down. Nope, I don't think that's gonna happen. All right, one more try, one more idea. Hmm. 
Ooh, that's way too high. Let's try 3.7 volts, approximately what a lithium battery would put out. This is kind of hard to hook into while it's assembled, but... There we go. Look at that. No problems. And we could do the same tests if we want, but... I don't think we're going to get anywhere. What do I have on here that's interesting? I don't think I have anything on here that I don't have on my EverDrive. I have the same set of ROMs, Pokemon Silver, Zelda, uh, Pokemon Crystal, but that's not going to boot. Let me just boot into the scrolling bar test. And yeah, same thing, because it's the same ROM. But, let's try at maximum brightness, if it boots. Brilliant, no problems. So yeah, that might be the solution. You might need to do a lithium ion battery mod on your Game Boy, especially if you're an easy flash user. Um, but so far, my initial impressions of this kit, man, this is this is a fantastic kit. I am really excited to go play with this some more. Um, I'm not too worried about doing a lithium ion battery mod on this Game Boy because I normally play on actual hardware carts. I mostly just have the flash carts for testing. Um, and this will do should boot on full brightness, regular carts. Yeah. Yeah, so that's not an issue. Uh, I know I mentioned that I was going to test out a voltage regular, regulator mod, see if that helps improve the performance, especially with flash carts. But like I said, I, I recently realized that my voltage regulators, they don't really work too well. I mean, it sounds like we're at the Scottish Festival again. I'm gonna retry and boot this thing. So, I can't really do any testing with that, not, at least not until I get some more voltage regulators, but the sound on this thing sounds pretty good to me. I mean, within limits of what the console can do, but I don't hear any egregious high-pitched noises. We turn it all the way down. It is putting out a little bit of white noise. But I don't know if you'll be able to hear that uh, just over the sound of my computer right there. Um, but yeah, no, this is this is fantastic. I'm really happy with this. Um, I'm probably going to pick up another one of these kits, not because I messed up this install, I'm just going to live with that, and it's really not that bad. I quite frankly don't really even notice it anymore, even though I'm looking directly at it. Um, but the reason being, I want to do another install with uh, this Game Boy I've got here, and the bright-eyed among you might notice this is not quite a Game Boy Pocket. Uh, but it should be fully compatible with this Game Boy, and I think we should solve our battery issues, but this is for another video. Uh, but anyway, yeah, initial impressions. I, I'm really liking this kit. Um, I'll have to do some battery tests, um, see what sort of battery life you can actually expect out of this thing. I really don't think it's going to be great. I think Funny Playing said you'll get like two hours max, and I think some people have already tested it, and that's just about what they get. Um, so if you're 
willing to accept that sort of battery life, then this is definitely the kit to get. Uh, especially if you're not really happy with the size of the backlight in the older TFT mods. I mean, look at that. These are, these are at the same height. I'm not like holding one higher than the other. That's a huge difference in screen size. Uh, this screen is even significantly bigger than Game Boy Color. Oh, I don't have batteries in this. But yeah, you can sort of see. I have batteries handy. I do have batteries. How convenient. Yeah, even even compared to a Game Boy Color, the screen size is just significantly bigger. It's it's really lovely. I quite frankly, I'd love to see if someone can cram one of these into a Game Boy Color. I mean, specifically with a Game Boy Color, make it a Game Boy Color mod, not just this screen inside of a Game Boy Color, because that won't work. But you know what I'm trying to say. I think it would be pretty cool. Of course, you'd need a custom lens, but whatever. Anyway, I think I've rambled enough at this point. Um, Again, sorry for the longer video. I was, I expected this to be about 40, 45 minutes, but I've clearly gone over that by quite a significant number. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go play with my Game Boy now. This is, this is cool. So yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, if you guys have any questions or want me to test anything out, hit me up in the comments. I do try and read all of the comments. And once again, I want to Say thank you to Retro Game Repair Shop for providing this kit for me to play with. And uh, I'll throw a link down in the description to Retro Game Repair Shop store and Funny Playing uh, in case you're outside the U.S. or if you don't mind just waiting on that extra shipping time. Um, but once again, if you do order through RGRS, there's a uh, promo code to get 10% off. I don't know. I, I like them. They have... They have some really good support. And I'm not just saying that because they sent me a kit. Well, several kits at this point. But anyway, again, sorry, rambling. I like this kit, man. I'm happy with it. Have a good night, guys. Thanks for watching.